Hello, everybody. We are back. Episode four. We made it. Normandy almost didn't, but we are here. <laughs> uh, to to refresh. Uh, well, I guess first off, I'm Seth. Connor, you're here. Uh, 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 y- uh, yes. Yes, I am. Adam should be here as well. Hello. Zippy here. <laughs> and Jacob should be here. Uh, that wasn't Zippy. This is this is Zippy <laughs> right here. Uh, yeah, this this is me. It's the real MVP. <laughs> no, Adam could be Zippy anytime he wants, but that means I have control of Normandy, <laughs> and I'm doing a lot of things to Normandy. Dude, you don't want to be him. He's like five health today. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's hurting, man. Wait for the Freaky Friday episode. That's what's going to happen. Um, Why am I in your body? <laughs> Yeah, you have to role play Normandy in Zippy's body doing the voice. That's how we'll do it. Oh, this is so look, confusing. Look, I'm a furry now. <laughs> how dare you? I mean, I wasn't before, I promise. I mean, uh... <laughs> Okay, recap uh, of last week. A lot happened. Uh, they went into a fighting Coliseum arena, and they were supposed to fight a giant ape, but they cleverly... Uh, freed the giant ape of its curse, and then a lot of crazy stuff went down. Uh, Zippy eventually talked him into playing dead to fake, like, pass the trial. Uh, That happened. Then uh, Normandy and Darian went inside the dead Triant body and found a tinder soul. Uh, Zippy got a lot of people, well, they, I don't know if you could call it signing forms, but they signed a lot of forms for Zippy's pills. Uh, Then after that, they found out the the main guy of the dungeon's name was Paul, uh, and they went that way. Uh, and then they got sidetracked and found an old man tied up in a chair in a side room whose name was Gilbert, and he claimed that his granddaughter had been poisoned by the same poison that the King of Orem is suffering from. Uh, and he was asking you guys to uh, help uh, get the antidote from Paul and then help save his granddaughter instead of the king. And he promised you a grand treasure as well. For the service. Then you guys went and fought Paul, who was this hillbilly type, and you absolutely destroyed him. He broke his amulet that uh, he was using to control all the monkeys. And uh, yeah, you beat him. And that's basically where we ended. And you got a ring of communication that was supposed to be connected to Felix and also the antidote. And I think I covered it all. Is that everything? A lot happened. It was a very long episode. A, a long one, but a great one. Uh, it's such a good one. <laughs> um, either way, if none of that made sense, listen back to episode three, and then you'll you'll get it. Anyways, here we are, still in the dungeon, uh, which is technically, as Gilbert said, uh, the dungeon where the first clue for the first grand treasure was ever found. Uh, you're standing over a lot of dead chimp corpses with their green eyes have been melted out of their skulls, as well as the dead body of Paul, who at the last moments got hit by the green flash from the amulet and also died. Uh, none of you were affected, and you all stand there. What do you do? You know, I'm pretty beat up. Zippy, how do you feel about doing one of your little bit of magic spells and, and healing me a bit? Oh, bo- <clears throat> boy, I just I just used one against my own self, but uh, I, I suppose I could I could spare you one more, Normandy. Uh, you did put up quite a good fight, um, so, uh, yeah, let's get you all fixed up then. You know what, you're being really generous, I personally, I feel like I didn't really do much, I did a little bit of mage hand, and then I just kind of fell to pieces, it was pretty sad. <laughs> okay, okay, so are you saying, I, I mean, Darian, you, are you laughing, you, well, you have something to say? All I would say is you've, you've, um, you've probably had better days. That's, uh, that's probably the case. Well, we've only been doing this for, for one... T- two, t- two days. Uh, uh, do, do you really? Do you think this is his best day or, or the other one? He's had some moments today. You know, I, I definitely think I peaked before. You know, I, I hope I can get it back. You know, who, lost my rhythm with that. Who's to Gilbert say? God. Who's to say? Really, though, because we're only going from uh, from empirical evidence right here, and from what I see, it, it seems that we we can only for sure know that your best day was either yesterday. Or today, I'm well. His I'm was just assuming um, that he had partaken in some other events and just assumed that he had had previously a a better day than this one. Is that 
Could we say that is the case, Normandy? <laughs> you know what? Definitely. I had a couple a, a couple days before yesterday, nailed it. I was, like, doing everything perfect. You, you should have been there. I promise. All right. Uh, doth thou protest too much? Uh, uh, definitely don't believe that one. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, uh, um, I, I believe him then because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not because I want to, but because, well, I just... I want to heal this man, and I think this conversation has gone on too long, Darian, and you've drawn it out for a little too long. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, if anyone were ever right. listening to us just magically outside of the room, you know, they'd be all probably be considering turning us off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say, really? I mean, we'll never know. Uh, but anyways, uh, should I heal you, or are you fine? Uh, please do. Uh, well... I, I wouldn't know exact numbers for sure, but I really feel like I'm less than half health. You know what I mean? I I, I, like I, like I see that, but I mean these monkeys aren't looking too good themselves either. Um, uh, uh, so I think there may be a little bit of a lost cause in this case. Are you sure? Because I've been able to to heal many of my friends over time. I've really <laughs> become quite a good healer, you know. Yeah, and in my experience, generally if someone's eyeballs melt uh, out of their skulls, <laughs> oh, yeah, that usually right. indicates they're gone. So you've seen that symptom before, because I haven't seen that, and and it seems that, you know, you might as well give it your best go. And so that's why I'm caught between, you know, uh, a, a, a carrot out of the ground and a carrot in <laughs> in the ground. Uh, now, Zippy, Zippy, listen to me. You know, you you are such a good salesman. You don't need to be worried about finding new prospective clients. Um, there's only one Normandy, <laughs> buddy. That's true, um, but you've never you? signed one of my papers. Oh, it's because I'm saving up to do a really big order down the line. I promise. Just give me some time. I heard the word promise you know, in there, and you know how much that word means to me. If I recall correctly, Normandy, I believe you actually... Completely rejected <laughs> his product earlier. Darian, Darian. Mm, mm, mm. Anyways, uh, you know, I'm bleeding out basically. Um, I'm I'm a bit confused right now, but I think we should just get this man healed. And I trust <laughs> I trust you, Darian. With uh, if there's no saving these little monkey men, well, that's oh. definitely sad to me. But but wait a minute, wait a minute, Zippy. I just realized. Wait. Are, Wait, Jake, are you on, like, a limited spells? Like, can you only cast your Cure Wounds a certain amount of I times? I have one more. I have... I just realized I... Seth? Yep. I have Song of Rest. I can mm -hmm. use that, like, right now to heal her, or do I need to do that during a short rest? Uh, well, you could take a short rest right now and do it. Uh... No, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. It's okay. I'll give it a go. Please, let me help you. Okay. All right. Uh, so I have to roll. A, it's a D eight, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And you add your spell casting modifier. Yeah. Okay. Boop. Ooh. Uh, that's a uh, that's a nine. Boom! Yes. Perfect. Well, I feel really good. I feel like. Right as almost right as rain. I feel like I'm kind of like on a 14 out of 18 scale. If I had to guess, <laughs> feeling really good. That wow. seems oddly specific. No, yeah, some people like to do like the standard one to ten range, but you know, 18 is way better. No, 18. Yeah, I've seen that in the quite quite a few doctors' offices. They have you know they have, they have those faces that go from like like this is how I'm feeling from like one to eight. I I certainly have seen a one to one to 18. Was it? Was it 18? Yeah. No, I sound like Zippy. Yeah, it's kind of like 14 out of 18 carrots, you know? You know, Zippy, for someone who's never left the, the Bramble Patch, I think it's called, um, you sure uh, seem to know a lot. Is there a lot going on in the Bramble Patch? The Bramble Patch is pretty much standardized across all areas. Like, we certainly <laughs> know uh, know uh, of you know everything that happens out in here, but it seems that... Uh, if you were to talk to many people in the Bramble Patch, they would say they've made and progressed quite better than most people out here. We still have the same, uh, you know, policies, uh, mostly of, uh, you know, that you guys would have out here, but, uh, maybe, maybe triple less the problems. Cause we are so great in the Bramble Patch. Alright. I, well, I, I can certainly say I know what that's like. As you guys are talking, uh, Blackjack and Yogurt walk more into the room, stepping over all the dead corpses, and Blackjack just goes, Oh, jeez, boys, you made a mess in here! Oh, yeah, yeah, a real mess, boys! What, what are we gonna do now? 
What's next? Well, I pull out the ring of communication that I have. Yep. And I say, well, we have a couple different choices as far as I see it, guys. We could either try to use this ring of communication, which supposedly will could talk to uh, Felix if Paul wasn't lying. Or we could, uh, we still got to sort out this whole mess about Gilbert. This is just like one of those books, you know, when, when, <laughs> when you, you have, it's like, Turn to page 59 if you made this decision, or oh turn to page 76 for this decision. But the, prob- the problem is, the, pr- the problem is, is you can never go back a page. So I think I've heard of those books. One of those Quest Your Own Choose books, right? Exactly. And you know what? Exactly. That's, that's going to be on a t-shirt right there. You can never go back a page. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I just think we need to make sure we make the right decision here. No, I, I don't think I've ever seen one of those books before. Couldn't you just literally flip the page back, though? Yes, but that would be cheating, Darian. <laughs> Are you trying to say you're a cheater? I, I, no, I don't, I, I'm sorry. I've just never seen one of those books before. I, you I, I make no a idea. pact with the book when you start reading. It's just oh, like, like... Oh, is there like a ceremony? Like no, a, not at all. No, it's just a simple pact between you and the words on the pages. Oh, okay. All right. You're a silly man, Darian. How do you not know this? When we get to Orem, we'll get you one of these books, okay? You can test it out. Yeah, sure. Here, guys, one, one moment. DM, I slip the ring of communication onto my finger. Okay, you put it on your finger, and nothing happens. Because you have to I attune ta- to it. I tap it. it. I tap <laughs> it. It's still nothing. You gotta <laughs> attune to this ring. You know what? I think it's I think it's broken, guys. I think it's... Uh, we could probably just throw it away. I'm, I'm not sure if it's any good. You can do that if you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll hold on to it. What is it made out of? Uh, it's just regular. It's actually a wooden ring with like a carving on it. Um, of like oh. the infinity symbol, as I said, or like two circles. Um, but uh, attuning to magical items. Most magical items need attunement. Um, and basically okay. to attune to it, there's some prerequisites you ne- usually need to meet. Sometimes it's like you need to be a spellcaster to attune or you need to be a cleric or something like that. But uh, how you attune after meeting the prerequisites is you have to focus on the magical item uh, for the period of a short rest. Uh, After that short rest is complete and you've just been solely focused on this item, uh, it will be attuned to you and then you gain the magical effects that it can give. Um, So that's how that works. Um, Hmm. Well, guys, this ring... uh, Well, first off, how's it look? Does it match my yellow complexion all right? Uh, No. It looks oh. terrible with you. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't asking you, DM. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Blackjack says, yeah, yeah, that looks terrible. I agree with the voice in the sky. <laughs> Blackjack, how? I thought we were friends. I... Uh, last time I... I don't even know what to say to you. I would just, I would just like to, to butt in right here and agree with my friend Black, Blackjack. Uh, I assume Yogurt's probably on the same page as all three of us. Uh, you no, know, I'm not, actually. I I, th- I think it looks great. Uh, well, Shut I, up, I, I've been getting I've been getting insults about my appearance for so long. I'm not gonna be like you. I'm not gonna keep the cycle going. I'm gonna change it right here today. Uh, Normandy, wear whatever you want. Uh, it looks great. I uh, Normandy, I, I I as much as I like yogurt, I think yogurt falls a bit to peer pressure all the time, and he's making a last ditch effort to muster up some courage here because every time we've we've noticed some appearance of him, uh, he's made the change on the spot out of pure shame. Um, yeah, the moment the moment yogurt tells me that he likes it, I take the ring off and put it in my pocket. Yes, I I just I just wouldn't wouldn't I, I think it's just best that you make the decision you want to because honestly, yogurt just. Just as a loose cannon these days. No offense, my friend. I am an open book. <laughs> I, 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 you, you peg me every day. <laughs> How do you know me so well? Uh, We're best yeah. friends, teammate. Yeah, so, we are friends, aren't we? God, teammate, why are you? Um, what are, what are we going to do about Gilbert, guys? Because I've been thinking about it, and I have a couple ideas, but I'd like to hear what you guys are thinking first, actually. Oh, all right. Well, uh, well, if I'm being completely honest, I, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, we originally came in here to get the antidote for the king. We got our gold passes from earlier, so we can get into Orum, whichever with which way we go. I, uh, you know, I, I don't really care if I'm being completely honest. 
Um, yeah, I don't care either. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, well, I guess the onus is on me. This is what I propose we do, guys. I think, you know, to be a king, it requires a little bit of risk. You know that your life is going to be in jeopardy sometimes, but a, a little girl, you know, doesn't have any, shouldn't have any reason to fear for her life. And I think, but, so, so I propose that we save the girl and keep her alive, and maybe we try to find some other way to save the king, maybe we go like talk to like a magical fairy or Look, something. I'm Normandy, not sure. I'm not sure. You can try and justify this all day, whichever decision you want to make. What do you want? Because that's really, honestly, in this situation, that's that's all I'm thinking about is myself. And in this circumstance, I'm fine either way. Darren, you really cut straight to the quick. I'll I'll tell you the truth. You know, with my political campaign about to launch and really take off, to have it in my past so that I let a little girl die in my hands is, you know, it just is really bad for my image. You know what I mean? But and, and you know, little girl probably wanted to live. And it's a potential voter for years to come. You know, it's really a... It's, yeah. Playing Infernal's advocate here, if the <clears throat> king is dead, that could bring a whole, you know, big shake-up to the political system and an area into Orum, and that could be beneficial to you. It could not. It could... Turn into a you know a full monarchy where he starts to take apart any kind of systems of government that are in place. So I mean it's a gamble uh, if you want to take it that direction. The other way, you know, do you pick the infernal you do know, or do you pick the infernal you don't? Let me let me just butt in here for a second. When I'll, I'll tell you a little story, uh, Norman. Uh, there's okay. So when you plant a carrot seed in the ground. You're never quite sure how it's gonna go. It could it could come really quick, but the carrot's gonna be awfully hard and and not very tasty. But it could take its time. But it might not be a perfectly straight carrot, or either. Either way, you know you never quite know what's gonna happen. Except, for, you know, for us Westboros, we have quite quite good carrots most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're almost always perfectly straight, so we're pretty good at it. So if I was to make a decision here, I'm sure I I could figure something out. But um, I would I think this is on you. Um, uh, time time to put the soil down and build your little carrot here. You know, Zippy. First off, I just want to say I'm so impressed. It really sounds like you know your deal about carrots. Really thorough, <laughs> great explanation. If, That's like if I didn't. <laughs> I certainly would be dead already. I just imagine <laughs> while you're talking, like, this montage behind you of, like, faded images of, like, you planting carrots and harvesting the field. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. You know what, guys? That's it. We're going to go save the little girl, except the the biggest problem that I foresee is, one, running into uh, sketch? No, stretch. Running into Stretch on a way out, you know, kind of like the guy, don't really want to kill him. So I think we should just have a plan to deceive him and pretend like there was no antidote at all. But we just got to make sure that Gilbert uh, follows along with that. If that's the decision we're willing to make to lie our way out of this, I just need to make sure that we're all clear that that's the direction we're going to go. And that goes for the two tabaxi behind us as well. Blackjack, yogurt. You know, boys, I've been doing some thinking. Yeah, he's been... You have? Yeah, I have. Of course I have. You don't think I think? Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Uh, go on. Uh, yeah, uh, so, um, I propose we do whatever gets us the most gold. Because that's kind of my thing, you know? I think, I think Zippy gets it over here. You want some gold, don't you? I want to do whatever my friends want. And you guys are easily the top tier of my friends right now because we've been together for two weeks. No offense, Darian and Normandy. Uh, and so I'm with my friends over here. Blackjack yogurt. Gold is, is exactly what I want. Well, oh, that yeah. warms my heart, Zippy. Yeah, it really warms it. It's really warm Forever now. Together. Put your hand here. Put your hand on my chest. <laughs> Zippy, you said when you got into Orem that you wanted to open a business, correct? That is, I just, yes, I want to be someone in this world, you see, and I think I can certainly do it. Well, to be able to do that, you're going to need, from what I've gleaned a little bit from being here the short time I have, that you're going to need some capital to be able to start that if you really want to make make your way through. So, I don't know if the other method 
is really guaranteed income. You know, he's, Gilbert's making the offer that there could be a grand treasure, but we don't know for sure. And with the king, well, that's a pretty safe bet that there's going to be some kind of uh, compensation. Darian, what are you trying to do, huh? Are you trying to undermine me? Are you trying to take the uh, the my argument and chop it to pieces? Is that what you're doing? No, I just want to make sure that everybody's committed to one of these plans. So I want to know, is that what really is going to happen? If we go out there and start lying to Stretch, are we going to get stabbed in the back by Blackjack and Yogurt? Are we going to get double-crossed? Are you kidding me, Darian? All I want to do is know that whatever situation we go into, that I understand where everybody stands on this. So I want to provoke these questions to know who's really committed to what. Because the one thing I know for certain is I'm committed to me. And that's the only thing I know for sure. First off, I'm insulted that you think I'm a backstabbing cat man. Yeah, we ain't no backstabbers, there. You said it yourself that you're in it for the gold. (laughs) There's a lot of things that can persuade a person (laughs) when the only thing they're into is gold. But we also came down here because Zippy wanted us. We we showed a lot of bravery today, right, Zippy? A a ton of bravery. You made it all the way to the big room where we had that big fight. Yeah, and And you licked me. So, you know, that stands for something. Yeah, yeah, we're helping. Darian, we're not going to backstab you. We're not that kind of cat folk. However, I think, you know, we could get gold from Gilbert. He looks like a wealthy man. Or we could get it from the king. Either way, I say we ask for gold just as a, just as a base rate, you know. Like, just so we get something guaranteed. And then we go from okay, there. I, I promise that we'll take care of the, the gold for you. Um, but in the meantime, can you two, Blackjack and Yogurt, carry Paul's body? We're going to need that with us. You want his body? That's a little dark. Yeah, that's real dark. We're going to need it for proof, for Strick. If we don't want to carry the body, we could just cut off the head. Yeah, but then, you know, it could leak blood on us, and this is a whole ugly mess. Yeah, but does that or carry a whole corpse? I, I'm not carrying it. We can just get the NPCs to do it. It won't be any harder for us. <laughs> <laughs> I love side characters. <laughs> Fine, we'll carry the <laughs> that body. That certainly is a good idea. Less, less, less weight, less problems. <laughs> All right, I'll carry the feet. You get the you get the arms and shoulders, Blackjack. All right, and they move over to to lift Paul's body. Oh, so, he's got some eye juice on me. Oh, gross. <laughs> so, is it uh, Blackjack Yogurt? Is it true that they just let their bowels free as soon as they oh, did? As soon as they lift the body of him up, you just see like a sagging in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> And they're and yogurt's like, uh, yep, yep, that looks about correct. <laughs> this man had a full load in the middle of a fight. What was he thinking? I went, I went to the washroom before the whole thing even I happened. I really wish I didn't have my cat nose right now. Oh, jeez. You always got to make sure you pregame. Black cat and yogurt. <laughs> black cat, mm, black cat and yogurt. You guys stay near the back. Follow us. Keep an eye on our tail. And uh, everyone, let's go so, visit Gilbert. Yeah, so we're all on the same page here, though. We're going with Gilbert, and we're lying to the greeters. I'm on page 76. It's telling me to go to page 93 next. Let's go. (laughs) Hold on, so we're all on the same page then. 93. It's another t-shirt right there, page 93. Uh, I walk... uh, No one's answering uh, the question. Are we all on the same page here? We're all going with Gilbert, and we're lying to the greeters. Yeah, page 94. Let's do it. All on the same page. You keep changing the page number. <laughs> First of all, we're on page 76, all right? Let's all get on that. <laughs> all right, one, two, three, page 76. 76, got it. Teammate. Darian. All right. It's page <laughs> six. Teammate. Teammate, page 76. And I want you all to know that I don't take kindly to traitors. So if anything happens, I will kill you. I'm in this for the long haul, so it, let's. Let, I, you have nothing to worry about. Okay, I walk up uh, to Gilbert's door. All right. So like, up the hallway and then back down the right side. All right, you go all the way, you see the door, and you can hear behind the door as you're walking up to it, you can hear the muffle just like, because you gagged them when you left again. Okay, I hold my hand out for the, for everyone to be quiet for a moment. And I say, okay, let me let me go talk to him. And I, And I open the door. And I hold my finger to my lips. So, yes, the you open the door, and you see Gilbert still in the chair, and he's struggling to get free from his bonds, but the room has not changed, and he's still just going, mm, and then you hear, or you see, he sees your finger to your mouth, and then he, like, pipes down and just looks at you, and you can see, like, the dried tears on his eyes and face. I use 
uh, press the digitation to wipe to make the tears disappear. Uh, it yeah, you see some sparkles around his face as they fade away, and it feels tingly, and he kind of laughs a bit. <laughs> but but it, but he doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gilbert, listen to me very carefully. I'm gonna take the gag off your mouth, but you have to promise. You have to nod first that you're not gonna make any sound. He nods. All right. I use mage hand and remove the gag. Gag comes off, and you can just hear him just go. Oh, thank you. Quiet. Thank you. Quiet. Now listen. <laughs> now listen. We have killed Paul, and I have the antidote right here. He he looks at it, and he his eyes are wide, and you can just see he's like he really wants to say something. Okay. Quiet. Uh, well, now I feel like I'm being rude. Uh, is this it? Is this this is the right one, right? He's looking at you like for permission to speak. Yeah, speak. Yeah, yes, yes. That's that's the antidote. It has to be. Okay, you don't have any like super powerful spells that would teleport me and like six other people and you to your granddaughter right now, would you? Unfortunately, not. Oh, that uh, would be really convenient. All right, so um, all right, guys, why don't you guys come in single file if you don't mind? Zippy uh, Zippy hops in and goes right up to the to the uh, the man's knee uh, and just uh, rests his arms like it's on like a like a table on his knee because he's short and he's like, "How are you doing today? We just killed a man for you." Uh, uh, th- thank you. I I appreciate it. Really, thank you. Uh, wh- what is your name? My name's Zippy Westboro, and I'm from the Bramble Patch. And now this guy, Darian over here, he is a cutthroat and he really hates betrayal, so you better not cross us because he will like slit your throat with that steampunk blade of his. He's made at least 11 threats to us today alone. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, he's a bit of a downer. I don't take kindly to uh, to traitors. His eyes go wide as he sees you're, you're a dangerous individual, but he looks at you and he didn't notice it before because you weren't really in the room, but he looks at you and he's like, oh, you're... You're in Eladrin, aren't you? F- from the Feywilds, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm a, I'm an Inferno. That's pretty cool too. And I'm from the Bramble Patch. Did I mention that? I've actually been to the Bramble Patch. I've never met you. How many? How, when were you born? Maybe I was there before before you were born. I was born 19 years ago. Yeah, I was there before you were born. What were you doing there? What uh, were you going to the old carrot stew? When I was a younger man, I, I was a greeter myself. But, uh, but anyways, boys, can I, can I please speak freely for one moment? Okay, listen, I know I was aggressive before, and I appreciate, I, I can't believe you defeated Paul, that's quite a feat. And I, I know I said things, and I, uh, and it still stands, though. Please, if you would give me the antidote for my granddaughter, I'd, I'd repay you, I'd, sh- I, I'll repay you in any means, even a grand treasure. I, I just, I just need this so badly. I can't let her die. Uh, sounds great. We are still good for the offer. Only thing though, this cave, right? A bit of a tricky thing. We gotta get out of here. Now, we took care of all the monkeys. Didn't even touch me, you know. End of the fight, didn't nick me once. Um, you look pretty scratched up, actually. I fell on my way back here, okay? It's a very he rocky He was crying tunnel. like a little baby. I just healed <laughs> him. <laughs> Anyways, um, so moving on, pressing forward. Um, there's some other greeters here who are looking to rescue you because they want that potion for uh, the king. Now, we can... We can either try to sneak past them, lie to them, or try to get them in on this third uh, uh, great treasure deal. Um, you've been a greeter before. I personally would like not to kill them. And I'm making this an open discussion, everybody. I mean, we we can all, if we have any ideas since we last spoke about it. Uh, but I personally think we just go lie to them, say there was no potion. This guy was like a random captive, and we escape. What do you say? I'm I'm of the Im- impression here that we should lie to them and let them know that there was no antidote. I don't want to kill them because really they're probably our best bet for getting in the Greeters Guild. And if we try and convince them to go along with us, well, we run a big risk there of things being a lot worse. So the, I don't want any sabotage happening to my potential Greeter career, however long that may be. But 
That's how I feel about it, anyway. It just seems to it just seems to me though that statistically, when a company is doing a lot better uh, and has high morale, they're more likely to put on new employees. You see, if we're to uh, to go to them and say that they failed their own mission, how likely do you think we'd be able to get a job interview there? He uh, Gilbert turns mm. to all of you and he says, "You know, boys, being a greeter, it's not about being a part of the guild. That's." That's not what r- real treasure hunting is. A treasure hunter goes on their own way, finds their own path. You shouldn't bind yourself to the guild. Anyone can be a greeter. You don't need an interview. Yeah, but is there great treasures at the end of that path? There can be. And I can show you the way. And you, you are promising to help me with my granddaughter, yes? Yes, if, uh, yeah, yes. totally. Yeah. Ah, ah! Yes, thank you, thank what? you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Oh, 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 thank you. And he's just, like, so relieved. Okay, I, uh, not using mage hand, but, like, with my actual hands, I untie his hands. Okay, you loosen the rope around his hands and legs, and he stands up, and he's rubbing his wrists and legs, and he's like, Whew, oh, thank you. I was in there for quite some time. Uh, so what's, we're gonna lie to the greeters, then? How many were there? Uh, there was Mooch. Uh, hot, no, hot box is dead. Uh, Mooch, uh, we got, uh, Zodiac, oh, and then I got stretch, the names written down. Mooch, Hold on, I got and, the uh, names written down somewhere. Yeah, Zodiac, uh, Stretch, Mooch. Mr. Mooch. Frosty, who was an orc, and Bondo. Yeah, those are the last two. I okay. forgot all of their names! <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, I had the same, I had the same problems back in the day. Um... Okay, five. Five people. And we're going to try and lie. What's the backup plan if that doesn't work? I think fallback is we invite them to join us. And then if not, then uh, we throw caution to the wind and play it by ear. To be honest, I think the likelihood of them joining us is quite slim. I did not think you guys were going to help me. But uh, we're on this path now. Let's do whatever we can to survive. Uh, all right, let's get, let's go. Yeah, and just so we're, I guess we're clear on all this, just so you know, Gilbert, it's really Normandy you should be thanking for all of this. The rest of us could have gone either way. So if you want, oh, really want to give no. thanks, give it to Normandy. No, don't don't try and stop oh, me here. Oh no, Darian, was it was way. a team. It was a team decision. Don't go it, being all falsely modest. No, how it's about fine. we make I, how about we make a little compromise? How about you just pat my little head right here? Who, me? No! The, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gilbert here! I thought that was taboo among your kind. Touch the head. <laughs> <laughs> Just stroke it a little bit. <laughs> Gilbert's like, uh, okay. Um, and he reaches out slowly. One pat, two pat, a little rub, and then he lifts his hand. You see, I'm not like uh, most... Uh, uh, Bramble Patch dwellers, I'm different. That's why I'm out here. And so you can do to me what no one else has done before. Uh, <laughs> that Take that as you will, listeners. <laughs> why are you all laughing? This is a big moment for me. I will have to discuss with you later how you got out of the Bramble Patch. I, I, I truly have never seen one of your kind leave there. But Quite a story anyways. for another time. Page 104. <laughs> Gilbert's confused. I really must read this uh, book. Um, all right, I've, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little done with this uh, this dungeon. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go. Okay. Um, so you have freed Gilbert, obviously, and you're going to help him with his daughter. You start making your way back through the dungeon. DM, how long does... Sorry to interrupt. How long does a bardic inspiration last uh, from the moment I give it to someone? Uh, he can use it whenever. It's kind of like a token, but I think he can only have one at a time. I think it expires after like an hour or so. Like I think there's okay. an I think there's an expiration on on bardic inspiration. It's different than. Let me double check. Okay, because I have a sinking feeling it's like ten minutes. Might be. That, that sounds right. like a number. The hooks <laughs> the hooks in my songs are not that great, you know, so they're not catchy, so they don't stick with you for a very long time. You well, gotta it's not use full, it. It's not fully written yet, you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, it'll be there. Um, how long, like? 
in game. Oh yeah, it's ten minutes. It's ten minutes. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So his is so gone. You've lost it. Yeah, Darian's. But I don't get it back, right? I still have to take a short uh, rest. After a a, a, sh- a long rest, you regain it. Whew, I'm so winded from that song I was singing earlier. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We're we're walking out. I think. Okay, so you guys are leaving through the dungeon, and you turn left, and you go back through the giant doorway um, with the symbol of Salem on it, and also there's lots of dead chimps who are holding the pictures. They're, like, collapsed, and the pictures are on top of them. And you make your way through there, and you go into the Coliseum, and you see just in the stands all these dead monkeys, just, like, all the ones with green eyes are just gone, except for one monkey, which you saved, and it's Mongo, the giant ape and he's still lying pretending to be dead uh, in the center of the coliseum you don't have to pretend anymore we we killed your leader he's still playing dead oh bother this is this one isn't too bright is he zippy what? go give him zippy go give him a wet willy no i don't even know what that is no it's, it's like this i lick my that's disgusting normandy as you insert your wet finger into his giant ape ear, he like jumps up and he's like, <laughs> and Zippy can hear him say like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> Normandy, uh, I'm quite awake. certain he hates that. Yeah, well, uh, I was really expecting more of a positive reaction. I thought it'd be funny, but no one else is laughing. So, you know, you can't lend them all, you know. He's wiping his ear out and he's like, oh, Zippy, Zippy, what happened? Oh, so much happened, really. Uh, where do you want me to start? A year ago? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, it all started when I was in the field there, just tilling Darian my... Darian starts til- walking away. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, I'll just get to the bottom of it, really. Um, it seems that when we killed your little leader there, you guys were, were mostly under under a little mind control spell or something. I, I'm not quite sure, really, still. But, um, the, the reason why you're here, and, I mean, yeah, your, your other chimp friends are, are technically here too, but, um, well, it seems that they're dead. <laughs> Even Greg? And he looks oh, yeah. to the stands, <laughs> and he looks to the stands to where Greg is, and Greg's dead. Most definitely Greg, um, I don't know if that Good. was a little... <laughs> Okay, I was gonna ask if that was a little little spat or something, but it seems to be rooted in a much more, uh, much more terrible uh, f- friendship. Maybe he can go burn in the deep. Uh, burn in the deep, you know. Apparently, uh, I no, never mind. Yes, yeah, so we killed everyone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> your <laughs> no, uh, we killed everyone, and um, and. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. Oh, and, You're free uh, to go! You're, you're free a free go, ape! Yeah. I'm free? Yeah, I... it's like when you're watching Aladdin and then, you know, the handcuffs come off of the genie guy. That's like you, except you don't got wristbands. But you're free! What do I do now? Who will I be? The options are endless. It's scary. Well, you know, a little bit of warning. Most humanoid creatures tend not to understand you. So, you, uh, actually... I'm just realizing I don't understand you either. <laughs> What's that much? Even on point. You've been doing you've been doing your research there, Norman. You're making kind of like ape sounds, but not close enough. You're piecing together the information from Zippy's. You know what? <laughs> I just responses. I just lost it. I feel like I was really onto something. That, oh, blast! It, my suggestion would be. Um, for you, you finished your your uh, high school career just like me, didn't you? You know where you went. Your, your what was it called again? I went to West Chimp High. I was the valedictorian of my graduating class. Absolutely. Did you? And you took the summer off, and and uh, you kind of started ended it up here, didn't you? This is my gap year. Absolutely. <laughs> this I I would recommend you you continue your studies in uh, in a post secondary institution. Maybe you with other different kinds of animals, where where you can maybe get a more diverse uh, education. But make sure that your credits are transferable in case you know you don't like your major and you got to go somewhere else. You know, I've heard a lot of people have a rough time with that. Or you could just uh, you know go abroad for a while, travel you know around, meet some people. Could be fun too. Mm. Regardless, See the world. I'll, I'll sponsor you if you uh, if you um, send me postcards every month. I'll do that. 
deal. And he raises out his giant hand to shake yours as a deal. It's a deal. For postcards. Okay, you shake. He's going to send you postcards. Um, okay, so he asks, uh, Can I follow you guys out of here? Just so I know my way. Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know what? St- yeah, stay with us, and uh, if anyone attacks us, just remember, you know, you're free now, so you know, we gave you your freedom, so, you know, loyalties and all that, you know, just, uh, you know, I don't think anything will happen, but, you know, just try to look like you're on our side. Understood. Um, oh, wait, I, okay. I can't talk to him. Zippy, can you relay all that, please? He unders- he understands you, Normandy. It's it's just that you can't understand him. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, cool. Um, But anyways, he says understood, and uh, you guys are good here. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. All right. So now you have Mongo with you. Bodyguard protection. Um, as you guys make your way through, uh, you pass the seesaw puzzle and everything, and you start making your way back. And you're starting, you see the daylight coming down from the stairway that you descended into the dungeon from. Uh, And down, just sitting on the bottom steps, you see Stretch, and only Stretch. And he's holding his side, and he looks super banged (gasps) up. And he just looks over and sees you guys, and he gives a little wave. Stretch! Uh, I run up to him. Are you alright? Hey, hey, Norman. It was rough over there. Lots of, lots of apes. They got Mr. Frosty and, and Bondo. They, they, yeah. They, it's bad. Those two seemed interchangeable to me, so it seems that, uh, that, uh, it was, a uh, it was a fight worth having. Watch your mouth, uh, Zippy. They were, they were friends. I'm sorry. They, they, we were fighting these apes. There was a ton of them. And then, all of a sudden, they all died. And I barely survived. Oh. Well, but, okay, I. Well, <laughs> you know what? Wait. So did oh, yeah, go ahead. did they fall? Did they fall before before you? Is that what happened? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's never uh, a nice thing to have to watch a friend die like that. I'm sorry. Thank you. But anyways, who who is this, and what's with the giant ape in? Did you get the antidote? We, uh... There was no antidote, Stretch. What? We, we f- look, we, we found Paul. This is the one who had a... Look, he had this ring. And I pull out the ring of communication out of my pocket. Okay. And say, in this, uh... You know, I kind of tuned to it right now. Apparently, I didn't know that before. But apparently, you need, uh... But this, uh... Felix has the other one. And... Paul and Felix used to know each other from their childhood, um, and this was all just a ploy to uh, to get him to come over here. The whole thing was a, a farce. There was no antidote. Who's the man? The the dead body. The old man. Yes, the old man, not the body. <laughs> the walking dead body. That's <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the spell. Sorry, guys. Um, he. Uh, just happened to be a prisoner down here. His name's Gilbert. Gilbert walks forward and he's like, Hi, hi, yes, yes. I uh, was imprisoned by Paul, the dead uh, uh, shit pants uh, uh, body over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, he did shit. Yes, pants. he captured me. He poisoned my granddaughter as well. There's, there's no antidote. It was always, a, it was always going to die. And Stretch looks at him. He's like. Poisoned your granddaughter, huh? Why'd he poison your granddaughter? And Gilbert gives the same reply he gave you guys. He's like, he, uh, and he's stuttering a little bit. He, uh, uh, did it to, uh, uh, to get me to show him this place. Show him a place where he could trap Felix. Gilbert, are are you alright? I used prestidigitation to, to make his eyes look like they're watering. Uh, yeah, tears start to fall. Or fake tears. I say, I say, Stretch, I know that you're injured and that you're not in your right mind, but Gilbert is obviously very distressed as well. Can you stop interrogating him, please? Why do you have a Listen, monkey? We, uh, quite simply, uh, uh, Zippy managed to befriend him, and now he's, uh, we managed to free his mind from, uh, the, the magic that 
Paul was using and, we, and he was set free. He has a, hu- he has a huge an future amp- ahead of him and I'm sponsoring him. He's going to send me postcards every month. Paul had an amulet that was able to control, seemed, uh, beings of a slightly lesser intelligence. And so we had that, the, uh, those armies of monkeys that were uh, the ones causing all the trouble. And after we were able to, to get the amulet away from him and destroy it, it, it broke it. But prior to that happening, we had, we had already managed to free this, this other ape's mind. And Zippy, luckily with his skill set, uh, was able to communicate with it. And uh, he actually helped us through uh, some of the trials actually and you know helped save us a little bit you're saying this was for nothing I'm sorry persuasion check oh, I knew this was kind of with advantage for, yeah uh, who should, should whoever has the most Adam can do it he's kind of been uh okay me, uh... Wait, wait! Say it again, Seth. Sorry, I, I missed that. Whoever, uh, so persuasion check. Uh, whoever has the most, like, I'll well, only take one of yours. Seven. We'll only do one. I got plus seven. Uh, to persuasion. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely not me then. <laughs> that's with a d twenty, so right? Yeah. So we'll only let one of you roll. Um, I have a plus four. Who. Okay, and my tiefling plus bard gives me like plus seven. Yeah, I would say go for it, Normandy. Okay, and you can do that yeah. with advantage. That makes sense to you because he was the one kind of mostly talking there. And, uh, okay. With advantage, Seth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 13 plus 7, 20. My, fir- my first one was a 2. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yay, advantage. <laughs> if I. Yeah. You see. Stretch. And he stands up, holding his side. He looks really wounded. And you can see his hands are bloody, because he was, he's a boxer kind of fighter. And he looks at you guys, and he's like... Bullshit. Stretch. Take a moment, sit down. I pull up my accordion, and I say, Let me play a ballad for you. To I shouldn't... Mind. No. Quiet? I sh- no, I shouldn't <laughs> listen to you. You know, I usually have these feelings about people, and I thought I had a good one about you boys. But I find you here in the woods this morning, where we're supposed to be. You weasel your way in. You disgrace Hotbox's body. I wasn't with you. None of the greeters were with you when you went down that path. I don't know the first thing about you boys. I thought I did. I thought I could trust you. Somehow you must have weaseled your way around Bondo's mind magic, but... Bullshit. You... You're the ones who poisoned the king, aren't you? <laughs> Alright, fine. Fine, you know what? You want the full You want the full story stretch? Fine. You know what, I don't... Honestly, I have no dog in this fight. I barely even care about this realm from the get-go. So you know what? Let's just put it all out on the table. There is an antidote. There's one of them, actually. And Gilbert here, his daughter's been poisoned as well. And the thing is, we have to make a choice between the king or Gilbert's granddaughter. But here's the thing. Gilbert's got some information, and if you want, it sounds way better than getting the king saved here. It's a bigger lead than anything that we've ever, that we've come across in our whole time being here. We had nothing to do with the poisoning. He's talking about a greater treasure. Another, he says he's got information on a grand treasure. And if you want, uh, you know what, Stretch, I don't know you. And you're right, and you don't know us. But greeters are called greeters for a reason. And if you want, I'll bring you in on the information. But I can assure you, we had nothing to do with poisoning. You boys manipulated me once. And clearly now you're telling, the, you're, or attempting to tell the truth. Your story's changing. Greeters are meant. I've told you nothing but the greeters truth. are meant to serve the king. And s- and save Orum. You boys. Well, I'll be honest with you. I serve no king. But I do. And I'm gonna take but, that antidote from you one way or another. But stretch, you're the laziest I, person we know. I cut him down. <gasps> okay. No. No. <laughs> no. Roll the hit. No. Uh, you won't believe me, but that's a natural 20. Okay. Roll damage. This is going to be double damage for you. 
I guess he doesn't make it by a strike. No. <laughs> um, that's just double on the dice roll, so it, was, it wasn't great. But that still ends up being an eleven damage. Okay, uh, that's with doubling. Yeah, I only rolled a okay. three. On my He's FDA. quite wounded. No. Uh, so, Darian, da- stop! Stop! Darian takes out his blade, unsheaths it, and w- wounded. you see Darian just rushes over to Stretch as Stretch was just about to rush over to you guys and start fighting you. Um, gunning for you, actually, Normandy, since you were kind of in front. Um, Darian, by all means! <laughs> and and uh, Stretch reaches out, grabs your kind of uh, your, che- your chest armor. I think it's leather right now. And he grabs it, and Darian, you come down and chop his arm off that's grabbing his vest. <gasps> And his arm <laughs> falls to the floor, and then you go in and stab him in the gut. Um, I just want you to know, I told you the truth, and you made the choice. I'll see you in the deep. <laughs> I know someone from that. Um, and uh, Stretch dies. No! I search him. Uh, you search him? <laughs> no, oh no. Gold? my gosh, let it, um, he actually let had it simmer, 35 man. gold on him. And awesome. uh, and just some hand wraps and some basic armor. He didn't have too much. Uh, he does have a greeter's cloak. You could take that. Um, it is pretty scratched Dar- up, but... Darian, this is yours. You saved my life. Twice now. I give him, I, uh... I give him the gold, the 35 gold. I hold it out to him anyway, and I... I untie the gold cloak and I give that to him as well. Are you supposed to do take him first, clean it, no. and then give it to him? Okay. No, I'll take just the gold. I don't want anything else. Sweet. I didn't want to kill him, but unfortunately he made the decision and I'm not dealing with any more barriers like that. The rest of his squad is gone and I'm not, I'm not allowing any of that to happen. So Gilbert pipes up. That's how it ends. Gilbert pipes up and he says, Boys, I told you that... Greeters are usually quite loyal to the king, and yeah, they, especially these ones, I'm sure. Uh, but well, I think you made the right not call. Not true greeters, then. I really greeters only care for themselves. That's how the real Wait. greeters do it. Yes. <laughs> I really liked him, guys. That's a real bummer. But you know, Darian, if it was him and me, him. You know, you made the right choice, and uh, I always he made <laughs> yeah. I I hold no weight of this. He made the decision himself. I told him nothing but the truth, and I allowed him to come in. You know, that's funny. He armed himself to attack. So I feel like one end of I feel like I did a really well good persuasion, but I guess it just wasn't high enough. You know, I usually oh I guess it was you know twenty wasn't good enough. <laughs> everything that everything that <laughs> happened in the past five minutes has just been so cinematic. I've just loved watching all of this. Zippy has a bag of popcorn from out of nowhere. <laughs> Black, Black Jack <laughs> yogurt. Isn't this so interesting? They're also eating popcorn. Like, mm, yeah, I can't get enough of this. This is some good podcasting. Yeah, real good. Um, um, oh, um, guys, we should totally go. If all the chimps are dead, we should go down the other path and see what um, where where they went. You know, if there's a lot of monkeys there, maybe there's some valuables down there. Uh, uh, no, in all honesty, we should leave now. If anybody comes by and we're standing by a bunch of dead greeters looking fine, that's not going to look good. Gilbert pipes up. Gilbert, where's your Yeah, home? Gilbert pipes up and he says, Yes, please, if we could not uh, dilly-dally, uh, we need to go fast before my my granddaughter passes away. I am... Fine. I live in Orem, just outside the in the northeastern kind of plains. Uh, it'll take about, uh, if we go fast, 12 hours. From here. On horseback. Well, that's a problem. Well, did any of the did any of the greeters have any like horse no, I guess they ran through. Well the we have the two they horses. Said, so we only have the two they horses. They said they had horses just outside the forest kind of thing. Oh. Alright, um I guess we could go try and gather up their horses and skedaddle. You ready right, to go? Yeah, let's let's do it. Alright. You guys start yeah. making your way up the steps. I really stretch like stretch. his body. Um, so, are you? He doesn't have any the like cloak. So, sorry. Do you have the greeter's cloak? Or are you taking it or? Yeah, I take it, and but I fold it up and put it in my bag. Okay, oh, you can add that to I your s- inventory. Zippy, Zippy, 
Yeah, I want you to put. I want you to put that cloak away. You're not my mother. I don't want anybody. Zippy. (laughs) Yeah, Derry, you're not his mother. Right now, we're in a rather dangerous situation. If anybody comes across you wearing a greeter's cloak and they find a bunch of dead greeters, they're immediately going to blame us. Mm. Wait a minute. What about Zodiac outside? Him and Mooch should still be out there. Fine. How about this? I'll stash it away, but I get to keep my hat. You can keep the hat. That's fine. And actually, that's a good point, Normandy. We're, let's not go anywhere near the horses. We need to get out of here. You're the only other... Actually... Now that I think about it, we could try and persuade them as well. For what? Well, if we can convince them that the others, you know, perished in the cave. And... Man, you know what? If 20 if twenty didn't do it, if 20 didn't do it, you know, they're probably not going to like us no matter what we do. You know, you can certainly fair, try, though. They, You know what? You're right. They, aren't, they, don't, they already have a negative predisposition towards Zippy coming into it, telling them that all their friends are dead. We could try to. It's probably not going to be a positive thing. Zippy, could you make us pass without a trace again? Mm. Oh, wait, are you uh, out of spells? Let me just focus in here. Oh, bother. Um, no, yes, I can do that. I can do that one. Now, will you do that one? That's the <laughs> that is another question. <laughs> of, of course <laughs> I will. Perfect. <laughs> All right, then let's... I say we give the other horses where the creatures came in a wide berth, and we get out of here back to... Wait, DM, town. is there any champagne around with this hat? Is there any champagne just to bring for the trip? <laughs> your, your drunken hat, you, can, you can't specify that alcoholic drink, but you can tell where the closest alcoholic drink is, and it's coming from Mooch. He has a little... little, uh... just flask. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, perfect. Well, if... I know... Darian doesn't know that, but if Zippy wanted to communicate that so we could avoid them... Uh, let's just go, guys, hey, and let's, let's figure this out all along the way. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Alright, so you're leaving? Right. Yeah, does yeah. he cast? Pass without a trace? Uh, well, are we, are we, like, they're outside the gate, right? So... Yeah, they're just I assume we're still on the, 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 on, the, like, the branching path there. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Are you, are you going to cast it when you go up, though? Sure. Well, how long does it last again? Uh, well, hour. you have it, right? It should say. Um, I think it's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm pr- sorry there, Norman, but I'm just going to get this out of the way and uh, and cast this Pass Without Trace right here. All right. Um, so you cast Pass Without Trace. And is... One sec. Trace. And that lasts up for yeah. an hour, right? Explain it uh, for the listeners so they can hear. So basically, it's uh, it's kind of like a veil that goes over everyone within 30 feet. So it gives everyone like a plus 10 bonus when st- with stealth checks, basically. Yeah. Uh, and everyone in your little posse <laughs> that you've collected uh, will get hit by this as well. Um, so as you get to the top of the stairs, or just before you get uh, out of the mausoleum entrance, um, you cast it. And you are going to sneak around. Uh, as you get to the top of the staircase, you see in the distance there's Mooch, and he's still patting and rubbing a Zodiac's back as he's still kind of crying over Hotbox. Um, so Ooh, everybody make a stealth check to see if you can get out of here and get to the woods without being noticed. Oh, now I get 17 plus 3, another 20. <laughs> and you get to add plus 10 to whatever stealth check, so... Oh, I got a nat. I got a okay, nat yeah. twenty, plus three, oh, okay. plus ten. So I got a. I got a thirty-three. I got thirty. Uh, and then I got a. You said plus ten for that. Yes. Uh, Thirty-one. Okay. Damn it! That's not good <laughs> enough, boys. <laughs> uh, I did my absolute best. They look 16. over and they see you clear as day. Um. <laughs> No, you cast a spell and everybody is just shrouded uh, and, and invisible now. Uh, and you start making your way out and, and you start heading to the left to climb out of this kind of like just pit to get back to the woods. Um, and you see your horses tied up there because you tied them off just before you like descended into this kind of uh, field. Uh, so you make your way. And as you do, the giant ape Mongo who's with you. Uh, his footsteps are still quite loud and you see Mooch perk his ears up and he looks around and he's like oh, Zodiac, do you hear that? <laughs> oh, <box! laughs> Why? 
<laughs> and he's just like screaming and that also just deafens it and Mooch is like, ah, must have been nothing. Um, so you guys successfully, all of you, make it out of here. Do you grab your horses, the two horses there? Yeah, because they're, they're not near like their horses, right? Like they're farther no, away. No, they left their horses outside the woods. You brought yours in. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah, so then, yeah, we got our, our horses, so we should have those. Okay. Do we... Are we? Are they far enough away from the horses that we can circle back around, get the horses, so we all have horses? Uh, to get their horses might make for an easier narrative on how we get there. Yes. No. no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. No. They're they park their horses basically where you entered the woods, so you'd be passing it anyways on your way to Orem's Gate. Oh, perfect. Um. Anyways, you grab the two horses, and you start making your way out of the woods. Uh. And do you just leave the spell on, or do you? Uh, no, I, I guess I'll just leave it on just in case there's any extra greeters around. Okay. Um, good call. You make your way out of the woods, um, and no one senses you, or no one in the woods, uh, no more greeters, anybody uh, sees you, and you don't see anybody as well. You make it outside the woods, and you see uh, about five horses that they brought. Uh, and they're all just tied off just to trees on the outskirts. But you have successfully left the Golden Road Woods, and you can see the giant wall of Orem, um, and way off in the distance, you can see the encampment where you originally began. Mongo um, says to the group now, uh, now that you're free, he's like, Boys, I'm, I'm going to go my own way. Go I'm gonna, my own way. I'm going to listen Sorry. to pointy ears and... Study abroad, I think. <laughs> Thank you for saving me and helping me. Let's meet again someday. Make sure to write. I will. And he just prances off into the distance um, and waving goodbye. But Mongo has left the party. Um, no. Blackjack and Yogurt ask you guys and say, uh, Hey, uh, can, we, uh, can we drop the body now or do we still need this? Yeah, my arms are getting oh, real yeah. tired. They've carried Paul's body out here as well. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, man, guys, I think we should just leave it. I mean, if we're not really bringing it to the king... Uh, can we retcon, uh, like, as long as you guys are in agreement with it, like, leaving Paul's body back at the, the cave, then if we're not going to try and turn it in for a reward? Like, I don't know. I don't think we would have... No, yeah, it, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, the, sorry. The chamber. Sure. Okay, yeah. uh, you leave Paul's body with stretch his body down there at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, okay, so you guys have your horses. Are you ready to go to Orem? Let's do it. I pulled my right. gold pass. Who's riding with... Uh, before before we go to break, who's riding with Yogurt's horse? Uh, I know he has a fat ass. <laughs> I'm solo. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, Norman do you Yogurt. Yogurt appreciates it. And he whispers in your ear, he's like, you know, that ring I think really does work on you. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> All right. Off to Orm we go! Finally! Hey, everybody. Seth here, uh, just with some more mid-roll announcements. Uh, first off, uh, I hope you're liking the episode. It's pretty different. It's pretty good. Uh, I really like this one. Lots of character dialogue and development. And did you notice I didn't even have to talk for like 15 minutes at the beginning? Um, it was incredible. They were just going at it. Uh, but anyways, uh, we hope you like it and we hope you keep listening. Uh, but other than that, let me jump right into what we gotta what we got to say. First off, uh, I want to give a shout out to another D&D podcast, actually. Well, not really D&D, but pretty close. Uh, they are called Wheel or Woe. And wheel, not like a car wheel. It's wheel as in W-E-A-L or Woe. Um, they are, let me read the description. They are a weekly podcast. And they are the world's first unfiltered real play Pathfinder 2nd edition playtest Uh which is kind of like another D&D system. Uh, and they are a homebrew campaign. And they play around a real table of friends and lovers, apparently. That's adorable. Um, no, they're really cool. Uh, they're doing, yeah, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest. And I believe they are the world's first. Um, it's a whole new system, a whole new more like dynamic combat systems, everything. Maybe we'll try it out someday. But uh, they are doing it, and they're doing it well. I've listened to their stuff. They are on Spotify. They are on everywhere. 
but check them out, please. Wheel or woe. We love you guys. All right. Next, uh, us. Do you like our show? Do you like the goofy stuff we do? Um, if you do, then why not support us a little bit? Uh, there's a handful of ways you can help this show out. And uh, I'm going to take the time just to educate you on them. Just so you know. In case you want to, you know, help us out. So the first one, word of mouth. If you want to tell your friends, do it. Because that's like the best way to get people to know our podcast, to know our stuff, to tag along for our adventure. Uh, it really helps us. Uh, next up, also, you can share our stuff on Twitter. Uh, we are on Twitter at Cheaper Dungeon. Uh, also, if you use the hashtag Cheaper Dungeon and you send us like item requests or, or like if you make up some items, hashtag Cheaper Dungeon so we can find it and uh, and like tag us in it and everything. And who knows? We might use your stuff in the show. We've already gotten a few people uh, suggesting items for us. And I will gladly take those and fill the shop because uh, I don't know. I, I think it's super cool. All the creative stuff you guys come up with. Um, also, if you rate us, you can rate us on iTunes. Um, that always helps. And also, uh, you can follow us on Facebook in in the group at cheaper at cheaper by the dungeon. There we go. Um, so we're all over social media. Uh, and also, yeah, if you if you share stuff on Twitter or you rate us on iTunes, uh, who knows? We might take your name and use it for an NPC or something. Uh, you never know. So good things come to those who help. Um, but if you want to help us in a, a financial way, we just have, well, we revamped the Patreon. So I'm going to take a second just to read through what we got for you there. Uh, so our Patreon, it's just cheaper by the dungeon on Patreon. And let me run through the tiers. So at $1 per month, uh, you can get our cheaper by the dungeon theme song as a ringtone. So you can get that, put it on your phone, uh, show all the cool kids what's up when you get a call. People will know what's happening. And yeah, so you get that for $1. a month, you get access to our super rad Discord. Uh, Yes, we have a Discord fan group uh, for those Patreon Patreon pals. And in that Discord, we'll try and, like, pop in as often as we can. And we'll do Q&As. We'll talk and discuss with the fans and try and get some more, you know, like, fan and creator interaction in that Discord. So $2 a month gets you access to that. Uh, $5 a month, uh, you get the bonus buddies tier, which basically any bonus content we create, like, you know, if uh, one of the guys runs a one shot or something, we'll record it, we'll throw it in the bonus pile, and you'll only get access to these bonus episodes of the show if uh, you're subscribed at that $5 a month tier. Um, So yeah, we'll be doing those. uh, I think we might be doing it quarterly every year. So every four months, we'll put a new bonus episode in there. Uh, But hey, it'll grow over time. Eventually, we'll have a million of them. Uh, at $10 a month, we have, uh, access to our Cheaper by the Dungeon soundtrack. Yes, that is correct. We are making, uh, music for the show and it's all original, all, all for us. And we want to give it to you guys. Uh, so if you subscribe at the $10 a month, uh, tier, you will get all the soundtracks we produce, uh, from now until whenever you stop. So forever. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be putting out a lot of stuff there. So if you want, if you like our tunes, uh, that's a good way to get them. And the last tier is $20 a month, a true friend tier. If you really like the show and are really gung ho about what we do and want to support us at $20 a month, we would really appreciate it. Uh, but to kind of compensate you guys for that tier, you get, oh, by the way, every tier you get everything below it as well. It's not just, you only get the thing from that tier. Um, so, uh, at this tier you get, uh access to our one shot campaign guides that we personally create. I know Adam's created a few uh and hopefully the other guys uh will get creating theirs soon. Uh but yeah, all the one shot campaign guides that we create, we will put them up there for you to have unlimited access to uh and you'll get the ones that we release now and the ones we release uh in the future. All all for free if you're subscribed at that tier. And then you get everything below. But that's our Patreon. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know what's out there and what you can get. Uh, other than that, let me get down to next episode. Episode 5. Man, it's going quick, guys. We were talking the other day, and it was like we, we couldn't believe we were already on episode four's release. It feels like just yesterday we started. Or it feels like exactly like two months ago. 
<laughs> uh, okay, episode 5 is going to be released October 29th, two days before Halloween. It's not a Halloween episode, I'm sorry, but um, it is a good episode. And, well, I guess teaser, you know, holiday episodes, we will be having a Christmas one, so look forward to that. Uh, but yeah, October 29th uh, is episode 5. Other than that, uh, yeah, you know what to do. Just keep listening, and we hope you enjoy the show. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Uh, we will see you later. And we're back. Okay, uh, so you guys have chosen to save Gilbert's granddaughter. You just made it out of the Golden Road Woods, unseen by the other greeters, after killing Stretch, of course. Uh, and you're ready to go. You all got your horses, Normandy's with yogurt, and you guys are off. And you guys are going fast on your horses uh, because you got to, you know, race to save Gilbert's daughter. Uh, so as you guys are going, uh, Gilbert's talking to you guys as you're galloping, and he says, Boys, uh, I, I, I think security's going to be a little tighter at the gate, uh, but just follow my lead, okay? I'll okay. do whatever you ask. <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, and then they go on their horses more, and you can hear your horse uh, Zippy. He's talking to you, and he's like, "Zippy, I'll bring you there faster, further." And he's going. Th- this is a great horse. <laughs> he's going fast. Yes, he's really faster back. and further. Zippy, Zippy, no! wait up. Zippy, wait up. <laughs> no one can touch us <laughs> forever um, together. And going <laughs> off into the sunset. Um. Yeah, now actually uh, it's about midday as well, um, but you make it and you see the encampment is a lot less crowded. So you just made it there and you can see the giant gates uh, in the walls uh, and there's nobody lining up to try and get in. Usually there's people trying to swindle their way in to get, Mm. you know, through the gate instead of paying the fee. Uh, But since the recent uh, raid, uh, the encampment's population has died down quite a bit. Am I the Uh, only one that's seen uh, Orem before? No, you've never seen Orem. No, I, I, not inside, but the, the prelude, my, my prelude episode, I, I saw it. Uh, no, you never did. No, you only saw the wall. Oh, it's different. Okay, sorry, never mind. Um, so there's the gate there, and, uh, you guys are rushing towards it, and you see these golden guards again that you remember, and they say, HALT! And then your horses come screeching to a halt, and Gilbert's in front now, and he says, uh, boys, uh, uh. We need to get through quickly. I'm Gilbert. You you know me, right? And they're like, mm, Gilbert. I uh, I don't remember any Gilbert. Uh, do, do you? And then the other one's like, Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that's Gilbert Bernstein. That he's he's famous. He's he's one of the one of the nobles here. We should let him in. But, but boss said the new captain, Captain Rand's gone, so we gotta go by the new captain's rules. As you remember, Captain Rand was a centaur that you tripped as he was trying to catch you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Gilbert says, boys, these people behind me are greeters. Uh, we're clean. And he looks at you guys kind of like, put your cloaks on. Put your greeter cloaks on or take them out. Oh, sorry. Put it on. Sorry, I like to wear mine only during official business. And this seems to be official business. <laughs> and uh, they see the cloaks and they're like, ah. Okay, yeah, th- you guys should be fine. Okay, just go through. And Gilbert just says, thank you, gentlemen. And as you're passing, Blackjack looks at them and is like, hey, we sound the same, don't we? Yeah, uh, yeah I guess so. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> and then uh, you guys blast through, <laughs> and you made it past. Um, thanks to Gilbert's help and your stolen greeter cloaks, you make it through no problem, even though the new captain's rules are probably much harsher. Is there like, a, is there like an Orem population size sign and everything that says welcome to Orem? <laughs> Uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> but if there was, the population would be a number I haven't thought of, but it's very long. <laughs> yeah. like, it's going to be like at least 50. 55, maybe? Now serving great pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the pancake factory. Um, anyways, you guys go blasting through the gate. No issues. And you are now inside Orem. But not really yet. Orem, as you can tell from the map, uh, there's kind of the border that surrounds 
it's territory. So on the outer outskirts, uh, it's just a lot of farmland and, and plains and fields and orchards. And then in the center is all the buildings and, and like the actual city. So you can actually see the city in the distance now. And it's massive. And you can see like gold shining from off some of the buildings off the sunlight. Um, but it's quite a ways off. And you just see lots of farm uh, farmland and lots of like farmhouses. And, and some people just like work in the fields. But you guys are blasting through. And you guys are going incredibly fast. Um, you travel for quite some time, uh, and are there any start... carrots in the fields? There are some carrot fields, actually. Hey, Zippy, look, we got carrots over there. How do they compare? Not even close. I can already tell from here. Yeah, no, they they. <laughs> <laughs> His perception on carrots is insane, and you can tell these are not bramble patch. This is quality. the first disappointment I've had since I've I've left the bramble patch. Oh. Oh, this is so disappointing. Gilbert yells, stop looking at the carrots. We got to go fast, faster. Uh, and you guys start, you're, looks like you're heading towards Orem at first, the big city. And then you turn left and you follow down a different path and you're going around the city. Uh, you're still quite a ways off from it, though, but you can see just how massive it is. It's so impressive. None of you have ever seen a city like this in your life. Um, and you can see the castle now in the distance and it is ridiculously large and it, lots of gold like lacing around and lots of stone and there's actually a second kind of smaller inner wall that encapsulates the city so there's like the outer wall and then the inner wall um but you guys are not even heading there uh, yet i'm sorry uh but you guys are heading around and you keep going and it's been quite a few hours uh and you guys are getting tired but you're still going strong and then you see in the distance a mansion with kind of an observatory in the back. You can make it out. And it's on top of this hill um, just outside of kind of Orem, about an hour's travel from Orem or inner Orem. You guys travel up and you go up this hill in this path. And now you see uh, a large mansion. And Gilbert says, this is my home. We'll stay here. Let's go. And you guys go further and you make it. And it's ornate. There's a in just outside the front doors of this mansion, you see a circular fountain and it's large and it's it's just flowing water. And it's just it is like a, a noble house. You can tell that this is ritzy, but it's it's far removed from from Orem and you don't see any other houses around it or even near the hill. You see an orchard just north of it, but that's about it. So Gilbert is like flipping loaded. Yeah. And, and you hear Blackjack <laughs> and Yogurt be like. Boys, this is the big money. Yeah, he's probably big money. he's probably deep in debt. You know, got like a second mortgage on the place. You know, it's all <laughs> facade. Probably. <laughs> it's so tough. To you know, guys. I wonder what the interest rates are on a mortgage like this. Crazy. <laughs> and he says, "Not good." And then, uh, <laughs> and then you guys all park your horses just outside the front doors of this, like just in such impressive mansion and there's these double doors at the front um and with also with the symbol of salem on them uh I, inter- interestingly enough uh but he gets off the horse and he runs to uh you normandy you're holding the the cure i believe yeah and he says please give it here you go thank you he grabs it and he rushes in and you guys are outside I really hope he doesn't pour it into a smoothie or something. It does like a protein powder, and this is all been for nothing. <laughs> um, uh, DM, what's the time of day? Uh, it's now that you've been traveling. It's uh, it's like dusk, like the sun is setting. Uh, Seth, do we see any uh, uh, kind of servants or attendants uh, uh, standing outside? Anyone we can talk to? Uh, no, actually, not, not yet. Uh, you don't see any outside, at least. Okay, um, well, I'm going to find a spot to tie off my horse, and I'm going to head up to the door. Yoga, tie this horse off, would you? And I go inside as well. All right. Um, Zippy, do you do the same? Uh, I give a little pat to my horse and say, thank you so much for pushing so hard. You did so well back there. He's, like, heavily panting because it was a long sprint. Uh, and he's just like, <laughs> for you, Zippy, anything... Anything at all? I love and, uh, you so much, my horse. I'm sorry I never have asked your name, but I think it's better we keep it that way. Yeah, yeah Zippy, what I, is your horse's name? I don't... I, I, it's not for me to know. 
Actually, Zippy, I don't have a name. I was never given one. Would you name me? Mm. <laughs> My name is... I'll name you... Hmm. Uh. Here, I'll Google no, the name. No, Horse no. namer. <laughs> no, no, no. It should come from the heart. Uh, I'll name you Long Face Cloppy Hooves. He hears that. <laughs> and, and he just looks at you and goes, Long Face Cloppy Hooves. A fine name indeed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you love it. So that's Long Face Cloppy Hooves. <laughs> Uh, All right. Number Mine, one mine's just uh, mine's just gonna be tea leaf. It's, uh, it's not that complicated. It's, uh, okay, that's all. And yours? Is tea leaf. <laughs> uh, Normandy, would you like to name your horse that you're currently on? You know what? I'm probably gonna name it Denmark. Denmark. <laughs> so Normandy and Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even realize. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Uh, the D stands for Denmark. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you all, you guys all go inside. Uh, Yogurt and Blackjack tie up the rest of the horses, and they follow you inside as well. And as you enter, you see these double circular staircases that go up in this incredible lobby, and you see lots of like trinkets and weird stuff around, like like elephant tusks and 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 just like ornate sculptures, and it's just weird. It's a really weird house. But as you enter through the front door. Uh, Darian, I believe you were going in first, actually. Um, yes. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh. <gasps> what? Interesting. Um. Uh, oh, not good. Oh, not good. Uh, that's gonna be, uh, saving throw? Uh, yes. Not just a check? Okay. Uh, in that case, that is going to be, uh, a seven. A good old please, seven. Please tell oh, me the okay. floors are just freshly waxed and he's just slipping or nothing. <laughs> Man, <laughs> we should have kept, we should've, we should've kept uh, that vial. I shouldn't have given it to him. As uh, Darian walks through the front door, uh, you're just not on your game. You're not really expecting anything. And all of a sudden, you hear a little girl scream and oh, jump and hit you in the head with a little wooden sword. <laughs> and it doesn't oh, do any damage. But you just hear, Hey, I got you! And it hits your head. And then she looks, you look down and you just see this uh, little girl in a little sundress uh, and, and this like bag over her head with the eye holes cut out. Um, and she just looks at you holding a wooden sword and just goes, Oh God, there, you swine! Uh, <laughs> Flashbacks of Aurora come to mind. <laughs> uh, uh, Aurora, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, Darian's kind of taken aback, and it's just like, uh, what? Wait, were you the were you the one that was sick? No! <laughs> and then she runs away. <laughs> what? The, oh, she seems All pretty right. annoying, to be honest. Can you hear in the distance? I don't like you. I don't like you either. Come <laughs> back, and I'll hit you with something harder. Well, ah, okay. And then she comes back. <laughs> oh no! And she's running at you, Zippy. Uh, and she's gonna try and hit you with her. Sword. I easily dodge it. Well, I'm going to roll this. <laughs> <laughs> I easily dodge it. I roll a 20. <laughs> What's your AC? Um, uh, 14. You easily dodge it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach you. I'm an adventurer. And she just looks at you and she says, Villains are not allowed in my house. This isn't your house. I know your master. Yes, it is my house. Mr. Where's Girl, your, where's your father? I have lived... A long and dangerous road. I have no father. I am Riggin Trude, the legendary sorcerer of the world! <laughs> and then she runs away again. Oh, little kids, you gotta love them. You know, such vivid imagination. I hate her so much. She seems so annoying. <laughs> I've never you. met a master sorcerer so young. <laughs> Stop sucking um, up, Darian. She's already run away, okay? You see a young butler come into the room. This young human butler, and he just goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry, uh, oh, man. Was Paige bothering you?" Yes, she was. Can you put her back in her cage? <laughs> cage? Oh, jeez. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You guys must, you you must have helped Gilbert, right? You, I saw him run upstairs with the potion. I cannot thank you enough for saving Marley. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I'm Joey. I'm the butler here. 
And you can see he's wearing like a butler outfit. I reach out my hand to shake his. Uh, he reaches out to shake yours. And I shake it and say, no apologies necessary, friend. Uh, we're just looking for Gilbert to make sure that him and his daughter are all right. Well, he just ran upstairs to her bedroom. She's been bedridden all day for I don't know what reason. But Gilbert left to get the get the medicine, he said. But uh, Should we well, go up there or should we wait down here? I, I Probably best to wait down here be- until Gilbert says so. Well, all right. Do you have a place where we can like wash up? Yes, yeah, yes. Do you have any... Do you have any refreshments? Sorry, yes. Oh, my, my apologies. Come here. And he leads you into a living room. Um, and, uh, you know, there's these ornate sofas and, and chairs uh, and a nice little coffee table and everything. Uh, and lot, and there's, like, heads of different, like, weird beasts on the walls. Um, and he says, sit down. I'll, I'll grab drinks and food. Uh, any preferences? Uh Oh, um, sorry, Seth, are there any beasts on the walls that I would recognize? Um, oh, from, yeah, like... uh, bears, uh, wolves, uh, there's there's even, like, um, yeah, there's there's a ghouled head on the wall, which, you know, kind of dark, but that's the farthest out. Most are just animals. Okay. Uh, there's even a rabbit head, but it's not Lapine. <laughs> Sippy, is, there any, uh, <laughs> is there any um, thing from the Fae? Well? Uh, no, not that you see. Uh-huh. Good. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yes, lots of stuff, but, uh, Joey, or sorry, I should say that, yeah, I think the butler said his name is Joey. Yeah. Or now it is. Um, and he just asks if there's any preferences for refreshments. Yeah, I'll take a macchiato, 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 well, that's hard to say, macchiato, dang it, I'll take a coffee. Coffee, okay. That was embarrassing. Um, do you have any, um, do you have any meat ready? Uh, Meat? Yeah, yes, I can cook chicken, beef, uh, uh, bugbear even, I suppose. Uh, b- uh, oh, I haven't had bugbear in some time. Uh, we'll do bugbear. Uh, raw, please. Uh, raw? Yes, raw. Is what's so we- what's so weird about that? I should inform you that is very dangerous. Uh, y- you could get uh, numerous diseases. No, <laughs> no, n- no, you can't. Um... <laughs> It's the way. It's the way. No, you well, well, here's the thing. I've, I've never gotten any in my life. I've. It's the way nature intended us to eat it. I don't. I don't know why you guys are thinking. Thinking this is so weird. I'll, I'll take a raw, please, and I'll be fine. Uh, Darian, people really get sick when they eat raw meat here. I've never gotten sick from raw meat in my life, and I've grown up on it forever. Uh, okay, I'm not one to contest you on someone's. This doesn't seem like a hill courses. to die on. Um, my. My uh, friends here, uh, Blackjack and Yogurt, the little tabaxis over here, will have some milk. Isn't that right? Yes, actually. They, it's exactly right. You know it so well, Zippy. Yeah, you know it so well. Uh, could I have mine just five degrees uh, warmer than room temperature, please? Uh, yeah, mine five degrees colder, please. Uh, okay, uh, that's specific. Uh, I can do that. And I will have some water. You thought I you thought juice. I would say carrot juice, didn't you? Oh, well, I did, I did. <laughs> well, you're wrong, because I want water. Carrots are for eating, not for drinking. <laughs> All right, water, milk, uh, raw, bugbear meat, and uh, what, what did you say, coffee? Black, He please. attempted to say macchiato, but he failed. Yeah. And, he um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sensitive, all right, guys? <laughs> The butler, Joey, runs off to uh, the kitchen to prepare your refreshments. Uh, and you guys are alone in here. And you hear Blackjack and Yogurt be like, Boys, we did hit it big. This is ritzy, eh? Yeah, so nice. He definitely uh, he definitely seems to be doing all right. I I think we we made the right choice, honestly. If I'm being completely honest, I've, uh, I've seen better. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's unfortunately a vermin problem that we saw earlier. I don't think he's quite aware just how serious it is. <laughs> I think if uh, Zippy, I think that might be another uh, granddaughter. Um, I, I don't know if it's uh, considered a vermin uh, in there. Uh, Do you think he's aware just how horrific she is? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I ask myself that a lot, actually. <laughs> Let me roll something real quick. Oh no. You hear little footsteps <laughs> trying to sneak. <laughs> They're trying to sneak up on you, uh, Zippy. And you turn around and you see 
this, the same little girl, the bag's off her head, but she's wearing a fake mustache. And she's like raising her sword to hit you again over the head. Oh, or try so to. Uh, I try to dodge it. Attempt to dodge it. Uh, since you saw her, you easily dodge. And she's just like, oh, damn it. Oh, man. You are a quick one, I gotta say. You have outwitted me, Ansgard Stumbletoe, the lord of the winter wilds. I am the strongest adventure warrior I've ever been. Wah! And then she runs Next away. time you try that, I'll kick you right in the face. <laughs> I'll kick you first. <laughs> Zippy, yeah, she runs away. Uh, <laughs> There's a problem, and I'm here to solve it. <laughs> DM, are there any books in the room? Uh, yes, lots of books. Uh, I I look through some, or I, I look to see what they cover. Uh, lots of them are history books, history of Orem, uh, <sighs> and, and kind of history of just uh, you know uh, the world of Ohm as a whole. A lot of them covering the war in this room, uh, specifically the war uh, dur- that happened for uh, during Orem's kind of like inception when it was being created. A lot of people wanted to get the grand treasure, and you learned that lots of people. Uh, specifically the Crystal Kingdom in the northwest um, of, uh, tried to invade quite heavily to steal the grand treasure of Orem. But they fought them off. I, I pick up one of the books. I, I pick up the book that looks the most promising and kind of start like flipping, like fanning through its pages a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just see more details uh, of the crystalline creatures that it tried to invade. Um, and yeah. Cool. You get you get a surface level history of that war basically through your skimming. Okay, I'm just realizing I you know I don't know anything besides what I learned growing up, so my scope is very small. Yeah, interesting. These are like great books. Um, as you guys are sitting there, Joey comes back with refreshments and he gives you guys all your stuff. And Blackjack takes a sip and he's like, mm, "That's not six degrees colder. I asked for five. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me take that back." And then uh, Joey takes the milk back, and Blackjack, Blackjack looks at you all and just snickers. He's like, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Blackjack, yeah, you're so funny. I'm a couple of gods, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Darian, how's your raw meat? Uh, I don't know, did I get it? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Everybody got what they oh, ordered. Oh, perfect. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know we all had it. Oh, it's It's great, actually. Uh, I think this isn't uh, as fresh as normal, but you know what? It's still great. I love it. And it's it's raw. Absolutely. Okay, I'm I'm looking to transfix. Like usually, I, I like it rare, but I I I would never eat it raw. I feel like uh, that would kill me personally. Yeah, I guess if you uh, kind of grow up eating the I don't know weaker foods like some people seem to do in this realm. Uh, you may end up like that. I've lived on raw meat my whole life, and it's, uh, I prefer it that way, actually. It's like the whole 30, except raw meat E. Nope, sorry, got nothing. I tried. <laughs> As you're sitting there eating the meat, um, one sec. You hear tiny footsteps again. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to sneak up, and she comes right behind your head, uh, Darian, and whispers in your ear and says, You're weird! <laughs> I uh I I turn and I, I look at her and I go You're damn right I am <laughs> And I take a big bite of the raw meat <laughs> <laughs> Some of the blood splashes on her face and she's just <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> And then she runs away. Zippy has a scowl on his face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Zippy hates kids, man. What is going on? Zippy's got a dark past, man. He's full of little surprises. Seriously. All of a sudden, you hear upstairs, you hear Gilbert just go, Yes! Yes, it worked! Oh, thank goodness. Marley, thank goodness! Maybe he was Viagra, I'm not sure. <laughs> Jeez! Oh, God. Just maybe. Um, that would have saved the king. Uh, <laughs> it worked! <and> you... <laughs> wow! Um, just a little pick-me-up. Um, and you hear, uh, Gilbert rush down the stairs, um, and he just goes to, uh, all of you, and he says, Boys, thank you! Thank you, it worked! She's saved! We did it! Wow, that's a really fast-acting antidote. That's good. Yeah, I'm surprised, as well. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, hey, right. that that's great news. Uh, I uh, when was she uh, good for visits? You know, I'd l- love to see the work of our efforts, labors. No, you know, now yeah. actually, please, please come upstairs. I want you to meet her. I want her me, to meet the people who saved her. Me first, and I run up. And, but he looks at you, Darren. He's like, but if you could please wash your hands of all the blood and off your face first. I, I mean, I guess I don't know why it looks so off. I think he's fine. calling you disgusting, Darian. I use press the digitation and wash the blood off. Let's go. Uh, you do that. He, you're cleaned. Um, <laughs> and you guys all go upstairs uh, and you find one of the bedrooms, uh, and it's a stereotypical uh, like princess kind of themed room. And you see this uh, girl lying in bed, just like. Uh, innocent face and long blonde hair. Uh, Insight check. Just kidding. (laughs) Insight check. Is this a real little girl? Um, (laughs) Anyways, you see the girl and she looks at you all and just waves. Well, hello there, Marley. It's it's a pleasure to finally meet you. As you say that, she looks at you uh, and she starts making some symbols with her hands, like (gasps) trying to make words. Uh, and Gilbert comes in and he says, oh, I'm sorry, she's deaf. Um, let me translate. Uh, she can read lips pretty good, though. Um, sorry, could you say that again? And then she does the hand signals again uh, for sign language. And uh, he translates and says, uh, she says, thank you so much for saving her. Uh, sh- she is honored to meet uh, her saviors. And I, I read in the situation and thinking that she likes us. I kneel down beside her bed, and I take her hand, and I say, It was our pleasure, my lady. And I kiss her hand, and then I use some uh, uh, thaumaturgy or digitation to make, like, some, like, sparkling butterflies. Kind of like, <sighs> kind of fly out, kind of like doves, like a magic trick. Woo! Uh, performance check. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. I am oh, not no. impressed. <laughs> uh, plus performance. Uh, 13. Okay. Um, I've seen better. <laughs> if you rolled in that one, I'd be like, she's terrified of butterflies. <laughs> she's, she's in a coma now. Um, no, you do that, and she sees the butterflies, and she's just in awe, and like she tries to grab them and everything, and she's just like, biggest smile on her face, and you can see Gilbert starting to tear up uh, at the sight of her being happy. Yeah, boy. Uh, I, I turn to Gilbert and ask, uh, what, uh, what caused uh, her condition? Um, she was poisoned. Oh wait, no, that's the different thing. No, she was poisoned. The same poison as the king. Um, actually, I should mention, especially to you, Darian. Um, you might know something about this. the The poison specifically used uh, is called midnight tears. Um, they're gathered from the nectar of black violets under the cold moonlight during the winter solstice in the Feywilds. Um. That's why there's no real cure. Except this one. This one worked. I'm not even sure what exactly this cure is. Or was. Wait, so you had to go to the Feywilds to get this poison in the first place? It seems Paul acquired it from the Feywilds somehow. This is incredibly rare. I've never seen something or seen this poison used, really. He, you know, he, does, he doesn't come across to me as an individual who would have the skill set to procure such things. And... Thinking back on it, he made comments uh, about the amulet, about how it was su- supposed to make him more powerful. Like, he didn't fully know it, or like it had been given to him. That's right. I'm, I'm mm. concerned we may have stumbled across something else here. He could have gotten... I agree, I don't think he could have gotten it himself. He was not a bright individual. Also, I, I'm not sure where he got that amulet. I assume... I'm sure you recognize the symbol uh, on the amulet, uh, since it was... An amulet of Ganala, you know, god of beasts. Um, I'm sure yeah, one of those cultist you know followers that? give it gave it to him. Well, truth be told, I didn't recognize that part, but I recognize the the poison you're talking about at least. Okay. But either way, we shouldn't talk about this in front of her. And you can just see she's like uh, still just looking at the butterflies in awe. Um, and he says, "Anyways, uh." Your payment, right? Um, let's go. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you your payment now. 
Yes, uh, let's dis- let's uh, go discuss. And I do uh, kind of like a fancy, like, formal bow um, to the to the uh, girl in the bed. Performance check, buddy. <laughs> what? No, I'm not. I'm not like break dancing. I'm doing like a polite bow. <laughs> you bow too far and fall over. Um, <laughs> no, you bow fine, Pyramid. and and she like looks at you and nods. Uh, Zippy, do you do anything? I've just been staring at the butterflies the whole time. <laughs> she looks at you and is really intrigued. She's never seen something like you before. And she, like, uh, signs with her hands. And Gilbert says, oh, uh, she wants to know if she can pat your head? Um, absolutely not. Bramble patch people do <laughs> not do- let that happen. No, that's a, that's a rule there. But Zippy, I patted your head earlier. Uh, the bramble patch people do not let the people, the others touch their heads. That's a, just, just a rule there. <laughs> Gilbert's really confused, and uh, he just looks at her and just, like, nods no, and then she looks a little sad. But then <laughs> Blackjack and Yogurt come in, they're like, she can pat our heads! And then they both put you their heads You don't want to touch them. them. <laughs> Especially Blackjack. Um, she pats their heads as they, like, like kind of, like, nuzzle up to her. Uh, she pats their heads, and then um, they back off, and then she looks at her hands and is kind of grossed out. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you guys leave the room, and you go back down to the living room, and um, Gilbert addresses you all and says, Okay, I um, I know I promised you rewards, but what is it exactly you would like? They say that... Uh, oh, sorry, Darren, you go. Go ahead. No, uh, no all I was going to say is, well, if we're going to get right to the point here, you said you had information on a grand treasure. What is it? Um, that is to the point. Very direct. Uh, right, yes. Um, grand treasures, of course. Your greeters. Um, yeah, uh, I may have been exaggerating a little bit on how much I knew. Um, you swine! <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me, I'd already kind of made that assumption in my own mind. But, I, but as long as the information's good, that's fine. With but me. I have something. Uh... Please l- l- let me let me get it. If this is related, and he runs upstairs, um, and he comes yeah. back down. Or do you, would you like to discuss or anything? Ooh, my coffee! I pick it up. Oh, it's a little colder now. No, I'm I'm fine with just waiting for him to come back. Right. I'm keeping an eye out for that little that little swine. Page perception check. <laughs> perception check. Perception check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, that is a nine. You do not see... You look around for her, uh, and then you turn around, and she's right in front of your face, and she bops you on the head with her sword, and then runs away. Daria, Daria, did you see that? She's getting better. They're getting smarter. Do you think... (laughs) I am the Lord Commander of the world! I am the strongest (laughs) leader of the strongest army! Zip it, you know, (laughs) you can't get mad at her, you know, she's been neglected because her sister was sick. She's just, you know, acting out for attention, you know, it's typical with little girls. What are you talking about? She's running all over the place, hitting us one, two, three, next thing you know, we're we're all down one, two, three. (laughs) We'll be out of here soon, Zippy, and then you never have to deal with her again. Derry... Darian, just please, just watch out, watch my back. I uh, make no promises. Uh, um, <laughs> You're on your own. Uh, <laughs> Gilbert comes back down the stairs, uh, and he comes into the room, and he says, um, "Okay, boys. You know, I promised you grand treasure and everything. I'm going to deliver." I propose that you make this your home base of greeter of greeterness and greeter opportunity, and we work together to find this grand treasure. I have the first clue here in my hand, and his, and his hands closed. And he says, "But I think we should all work together. I think we could actually do this." Um, if this is going to work, we need gold cloaks for blackjack, yogurt, and Darian. Also, of course. Before we make any decisions on any of this. I want to know what information you hold in your hand. Uh, right. It's going to be underwhelming. Uh, but again, the <laughs> oh, reason great. I offered to work together is because I used to be a greeter, and I would love to solve this and find a grand treasure with you all. And um, just, just be warned, it is underwhelming. 
Um, oh, no. But it is a clue. And uh, I probably should stop talking because I feel like I'm making you feel doubt. <laughs> um, but here it is. And he puts it on the table. Um, and it's a white piano key. And that's it. No markings, just a white piano key. Are you sure you didn't just the... take this from upstairs? Hold on. Well, yeah. Did... <laughs> that's a legitimate question. Um, <laughs> uh, he says, no, no, of course not. I, I, I know it looks normal, but, but watch this. And he pushes on the piano key, and it sinks into the coffee table. And you hear this really weird note. It's like an oaky note from the wood of the coffee table. And it goes, blah. And hold then, on, hold on. And then mm, I think that's and then the B flat, I think. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, B flat for sure. Good ear. Wait a minute, um, no. Then, of course, if it's a white note, it can't be B flat. Silly me. Sorry. B flat. <laughs> <to> black, black <laughs> uh, bad, bad ear. Yeah. Then that was a bad ear. Yeah, Terrible you know, it's probably like a B. I ear. bet it's a B. <laughs> I I think it is. <laughs> Good second try. Um, <laughs> and he raises his finger, and the piano key lifts out of the table and uh he grabs it again and holds it up he says see this is something well i admit that looks like a neat trick um here look look on the bottom how does this and then he turns it around and on the bottom you see a symbol that very much looks similar to the symbol of salem except there's an x in the bottom right corner Hmm. by the way for listeners symbol of salem i'll post it online you can see um, but yeah, it's a little bit different from the symbol of Salem that you're used to. That's all around Orm and everything. How, um, how did you get this? I found it at Poker Rock. Well, n- not actually Poker Rock, near there. Um, it was in this fantastic cave with symbols of Salem all over. And there was a pillar in the middle. And I cracked the code, I moved the sliders, and I found this in my younger years. But after I opened it, the capsule opened. And there was this piano key. So this is this cave well known? No, I've well I've never heard of anyone. I stumbled upon it myself. Guys, this is good news. Are right, wait first off insight check. Is he telling us the truth? Go for it. Uh, seventeen. Okay. Um, yeah, you can tell this. He seems genuine. Like he was lying before about knowing a lot about grand treasures. But um, now you can tell, like, this is all he knows. Guys, this is good news. If this key really is uh, a follow-up clue, uh, and he found it years ago, that means that it's it's uh, that it's at least, uh, it, it, it might mean that uh, all the other greeters are tracing down a false lead. Well, there could be many grand treasures, so maybe they're on another one. And Well, at least they're not key... following our lead. <laughs> Hopefully not. But if then this key it may very well be a key, but that's not oh, really a, a lead. We have we have no direction as to where we're going. Well, that's well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work together, figure this out. And right? How how do how do we intend to do that? I'm sorry. Do you have a plan in place of how we're gonna figure out where this key goes to? Um, not not really. But it, it's in the works. <laughs> Oh, well, you're right to, uh, to say that that was a stretch, what you... Yeah, way to underperform, Gilbert. Magic. Well, you I... know what, though? The decision's already been made. I really don't think we have uh, many other options at this point. Um, if we work together, I can give you all the supplies you need. Armor, weapons, gold. And yeah, you hear um, uh, Blackjack go, gold? Oh, yeah, boys, gold. He said the G word. Can, uh, can we discuss for a moment? Could we have the room? Of course, of course. And he leaves the piano key on the table. Make sure Paige is not spying on us, yes, please. Yes, please. Keep, keep her away. Put her back in a cage, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's kidding. He's gonna... <laughs> I'm not kidding. concerned that you said cage. <laughs> but um, he, he leaves. All right, guys. With my and... keen senses, I think I've come up with a good solution of our next step here. I think he's telling the truth. And, well, I think this might be our best shot right here. What I think I propo- what I propose, and we can kind of discuss this as well, is Orem has a, a lot of uh, different shops in here. I imagine uh, full of people with many different backgrounds. 
I say we go on the bottom of the key is clearly a Preston symbol, as we saw. I think our best course of action is to um, is to go to uh, maybe a, 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 I don't know what you really call it, but like a, a printing press place maybe or maybe uh, maybe a piano shop wherever the wherever the places with the with the symbol of salem are pressed into things i think uh that would be our first step here well that's a potentially a good way to to lead the investigation zippy but i kind of wanted to have a conversation about is this is this really what we want to do do we want you know to align ourselves with, with with gilbert here i mean honestly with everything else that's gone on Having a little bit of a, well, a backer uh, with doing some more investigation in, in where we're going is probably going to be pretty helpful. Well, I think you know what I want, and uh, I've already proposed my idea. Uh, Norman, what about yourself? Well, you know, I don't think there's anything stopping us from joining the original, the OG Greeters Guild. Um, the OGGG, I like to call it. Um, I don't think there's... Um, Anything stopping us from joining them later? We definitely have uh, Gilbert's loyalties, and he definitely owes us. I say we follow this end to this lead to where it ends, and if and we might find something that no one else is looking for, and if not, then we can always uh, jump on the bandwagon of everyone else. Yeah, if I, I'm not really a fan of uh, of these so-called self-proclaimed greeters. Now they're not they're not really greeters at all. They <laughs> they're all they're just more soldiers to a king, and I have no intention of, uh, of swearing fealty to any king in this realm. So I can honestly say this really burned uh, uh, my interest for the the true greatest guild, as it were. I say we kind of, you know, start our own. Well, uh, then I think we're in agreement. I mean, Black Jack and Yoga just want gold, and there's plenty of that, so I think we're all down. Boys, this is the best decision we've ever made as a youth. I thought you said yeah, your best decision was along. having me uh, as your little partner. Yeah, what are you saying, Blackjack? And Yogurt slaps uh, Blackjack. He's like, oh, yeah, right. Sorry, sorry. I got gold on the brain. <laughs> All right, Gilbert, you're free to come in now. <laughs> um, you can see uh, he wanders back in and he's <laughs> uh, with his hands covering his ears. Um <laughs> And he walks in, he says, so, uh, what do we think? I'll help you. I will be good on this promise. I will get you that grand treasure. I just need a little help. Yes? No? Maybe? All right. Well, G- Gilbert, yeah, we've discussed it. Yeah. Wait, is that a yes? Yeah. <laughs> Joey, bring the cake! <laughs> and then Joey the butler brings in a cake, and it says, um, Partners. <laughs> and uh, and he puts it on the table, and he says, "This is a time for a celebration. Everybody, drink, eat uh, raw meat, and uh, let's celebrate!" <laughs> Yay! Right, <cheers. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to blow out the candles. I want to blow out the candles myself. <sighs> okay, um, so you guys party, and are you? Uh, Gilbert offers for all of you to stay the night here. Um, yeah, and totally. uh, he says uh, to all of you, he's like, "Tomorrow, how about it?" We all go into town, and let's start this investigation. We'll go into Orem, see what we can find, yeah? Perfect. This right. could either be the best thing we've ever done, or the biggest mistake. Ooh. Potential mistake. Foreboding omen. But, I, I, mistake, I, but, but I'm going to have a great time regardless. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys all... Uh, go upstairs, and you each have your own actual separate rooms, guest rooms. Uh, and they're quite nice. They have a desk. They have some ink and, and, and quills and, and a bed. Um, and you each retire to your own rooms. And, uh... Yeah, are you, are you you're just gonna sleep? I, I don't know about Darian. I always have to ask. <laughs> um, how comfy is the bed? It's a nice bed. I'll sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, if we were allowed to do anything, Seth... Uh... Yep. I I do try to find or or I tell Gilbert uh to come see me uh when we have a moment alone. Okay, sure. Uh you each go to your rooms. Actually, Blackjack and Yogurt request to have a triple bunk bed with Zippy in his room if Zippy's okay with it. I am not okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Zippy. Okay, just bunk bed for me and Yogurt. And uh they go have their bunk bed. Um 
Uh, but yes, uh, Gilbert comes. I thought you were going to say yes to that. <laughs> no, I'm um, not okay with that. I want my own time Gilbert. in my own room. I need to think things through. Ooh. Gilbert goes to um, Normandy's room, uh, as you requested. Uh, hi, Gilbert. How's it going? Uh, fantastic. This is the best day of my life. I'm glad. I'm really glad that we could help you and your daughter. Yes, thank you again. I know I know. the others said that you were the like the linchpin in that decision, and I can't thank you enough. Now, listen to me, Gilbert. Uh, the, the truth is, I would have helped your daughter no matter what, even if there was nothing to gain. And I'm still glad that your daughter is well, even though you've really fallen short on what you promised us back in the cave. Now, let me tell you where I'm coming from. I actually have great ambitions with this city. And to be honest with you, I one day see myself as... Something like a king here. Really? Something... Yeah, well... Go on. Uh, I, I was just asking, really? Really? Yes. Uh, and uh, I think it won't take you very long to realize that I'm well capable of that. I have a great team of people who are with me, who I care I sh- about. I should inform you first that it's going to be difficult if that's your goal. Because well, Orem, how it works, is the kings are actually... Uh, elected, kind of. Uh, the next king can only be chosen from one of the three founding families. Uh, the family of the sorcerer, uh, the family of the cleric, and the family of the fighter. Uh, they were the three of the original greeters that found the grand treasure that stayed to form this city. And Well, that hardly seems fair. It's not really election, is it? Well, yeah, I know. But just a heads up, that's how that works. Well, um, you know what they say, Gilbert, is that Rules are made to keep things as they are, but the only way to move forward is to break them. And I want, and I'm talking to you now, because I'd love to believe that I have your friendship and loyalty in this endeavor of mine down the road. If if that's what you truly want, I'll help you in whatever way I can. And I want you to know that I take very good care of the people who are with me. I believe that treat those who are near well, and those who are far will come to you. That's beautiful. Where did, where did you hear that? ChineseProverbs.com ah, <laughs> Yes, I've heard of it. <laughs> it's I myself You've frequent probably that. Never read it. Yeah, it's foreign. Yeah. It's very uh, from a distant land. Can you two keep the racket down? I'm trying to sleep in this big bed. I'm, I'm getting lost. Right. Yeah, oh, yes. Sorry, Zippy. <laughs> Sorry, um, Zip. Uh, Gilbert. Norman, let's, yeah. let's talk more later. We'll have all the time in the world, but I'd also like to ask you about the tattoos covering your body, if you wouldn't mind, later. Uh, yeah, and if you want a more personal look, I can show you the rest of them. Later. Later, uh, yeah. I, I gotta go to bed. You know, I wasn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah good night. In fact, get out. I, got, I gotta go to sleep. Bye. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, sleep well. Get out! And Gilbert... <laughs> get out of my room, Dad! Um, <laughs> Gilbert leaves. Um, and... Uh, anything else? Are you all going to bed? Uh, uh, Zippy asks Gilbert where the bathroom is. Oh, yes. Uh, well, actually, we have four bathrooms. Two on this floor uh, and two on the base. Uh, none in the basement, but... Um, just sh- yeah, just tell one just me the closest the one. I don't need a, a map of your whole house, please. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me think. Uh, down the hall, take a left. This is a pragmatist. Uh, push, push the book inside, the red book. There's only one in that bookshelf. Push it in. Door will revolve. There's a bathroom. Can you just get me some gravel and put it in your room, in my room, and I'll just do do my business there? That all seems so complicated. <laughs> Uh, Joey and Joey's like yes, and uh, Joey goes and gets the your gravel. <laughs> Just put it in the corner and water, and he brings it to you and puts it on your nightstand. The gravel's on the nightstand and water, but no, not gravel, gravel. Gra- you like want kitty, gravel? Like, like, like kitty, kitty litter. litter. <laughs> oh, I misread that <laughs> completely, and so did Joey. Uh, but Joey <laughs> brings you gravel. I get he brings you a gravel first, and then you correct him, and he goes out and gets gravel, <laughs> and uh, he brings it, and he's like, uh, "Here you go. Here's a bag full of gravel." Yeah, put it in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not gonna ask questions, and he puts it down, and he leaves. Uh, Zippy crawls into bed, laughs to himself. <laughs> I'm just gonna use the bathroom, <laughs> the normal one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Darian uh, takes a 
Well, I guess they probably don't have showers, so. Darian takes a bath. What, does he lick himself? Ew. <laughs> Black Jack, you'll get. <laughs> no, um, after traveling for some time and being uh, really nomadic uh, as of late, uh, he thinks he uh, deserves uh, to freshen up, so he has a nice bath. All right. Um, as you're taking a bath, please make a perception check. Oh, gross. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I swear. Really? Better not be. Uh, you said perception. Yeah, uh, that's a 20, not natural. Um, okay, you hear the bathroom doors start to open, and you see a little girl with a bandit mask on and a little wooden sword, and she uh, is starting to slowly open the door, trying to sneak in. Um, Darian's kind of got his arms on, like, the side of the tub, and his head's, like, leaning back, and he looks over and sees this, and just raises an arm and points at her, get out! <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down! Uh, she looks at you, and she's just like, oh, damn it! You saw through Bandito's disguise, Lord of the Shadows! Okay, well, I'll try again tomorrow! <laughs> and then she runs away. Lock that door, Darian. <laughs> yeah, she left the door open. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I, I grab a, a towel to cover myself, and I go and Lock, close the door, and then I place like a, if there's like a counter or like a dresser or something in there, yep. I place it in front of the door. <laughs> okay, you barricade the door. Yeah, and you take a nice bath. And uh, are you all going to sleep now after all that? Yeah. Um, one last thing. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh no, I can't. I don't know what I need to do to attune to this ring, right? Uh, you just need to short rest and concentrate on it. Oh, there's nothing um, else. No, but uh, you'll have to be kind of, like, awake, actually focusing. If you're sleeping, it'll be a... Yeah, you can. Oh, okay, never mind. Different day. I go to sleep. Okay. Well, it's only, like, an hour if you wanted to take an hour before you went to bed. Fine, Darian. I'll do it. I Okay. <laughs> I stare at the ring uh, and I say, one ring to rule them all. <laughs> <laughs> you focus on it for a short rest uh, time period, and you are now attuned to the ring. You, you slide it on your finger, uh, and you can tell that the communication uh, magic is there. Hello? Hello? You speak, and there's no reply. Can I order a pizza? I like, I like to order a, a, a pizza. <laughs> oh, this is Domino's. What would you like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, nothing Nothing happens. Um, But, yeah. Okay, I just say, it's... I don't know if anyone's listening, but if this is Felix, I just thought you should know your friend Paul came to a horrible end. And I pull off the ring. Still silence. Just still total silence. Hopefully it left a voice message. That's all I can say. <laughs> beep. Um, <laughs> oh, I should have waited till after the beep. Dang it. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, not, you don't hear anything. But you're attuned to it now. Um, and you go to sleep, right? Yeah. And yeah. you're all going to sleep? Yes. Okay. As you're sleeping, uh, even Darian's sleeping and Normandy's sleeping, you, you get one of the best nights of your life because, like, the past two days have been insane for you guys. <laughs> you you are tired. Um, and Zippy, in your dream, it's a little different. Ooh. You, again, are in this kind of void. And um, you try to speak, uh, but no words come out. Um and you try to move around, and all of a sudden, your head pops out. It's like you were underwater, and you see you're in a black sea, and the waves are harsh, and it, it's there's like no light, but you can feel the water hitting you. And you see in the distance, this blue neon light start to glow, and it starts to dance in the distance, and it starts to leave a trail of its blue light, and you see this large tree start to form in the distance with blue balls of fruit hanging off of it and it just keeps going and going and going up uh, and then you see a man on a raft and he's like standing up paddling towards you and he looks at you and he just reaches out a hand um, and that's when you wake up hmm. and that's where we're going to end no! the episode <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> but before we end the episode, bonus, 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 before we end. Ooh. Zippy, make a dexterity saving throw. <gasps> oh no. 
That is a 16. Paige tries to hit you with a sword to wake you up, but you are I hate so you! Quick. Get out of my room! I hate you! He throws, starts throwing the gravel at her. <laughs> the gravel. Uh, she's, like, getting hit, and she's like, ow, 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 I'll get you! I hate you! I hate you! And she runs away. And that's where we're going to end the episode. Keep it by the dungeon, baby! Woo! See ya. See ya.